Hey everybody, Aaron back with you. I am so excited to be back and to really just be doing the podcast. Uh, we had a couple of weeks where it was a lot of going to trainings and not really getting a lot of guests on. So I'm really happy that I'm back and we're ready to roll here. So it's uh, it's very therapeutic for me. And it's nice to talk to people and it's nice to really reach out and just talk to those like-minded people. And speaking of like-minded people, which brings me to our guest today. His name is Sam Webb. He is the co-founder of Livin.org and the podcast host for It Ain't Week to Speak with Sam Webb. He has an amazing story. He's got an amazing organization and he is in it for the right reasons. He's in it to really break that stigma. And I referenced it in the no in the show, but it's very similar to what we're doing. And I love that there's different organizations that we can collaborate with and really find ways to work. And even if it's a podcast, we talk, we can break that stigma together and show vulnerability and just be there for one another. It's very important more than ever now. And we have to really remember that. This is a really great podcast. I am so excited to be back. Like I said, it's a good one. Enjoy this. Let's roll. So, hi everybody! Welcome back to the Center for Suicide Awareness podcast. Today, I have a special guest that I met through that. Again, I've actually interviewed so many people through that WhatsApp app, and uh, his name is Sam Webb. He is uh, co-founder of Livin.org, which is a nonprofit, and their message is breaking the stigma of mental health. So, Sam, thanks so much for joining me today, mate. Thank you very much, Aaron, for having me on board, mate. I'm, I'm looking forward to having a good chat with you. Absolutely. And just for, for my listeners, because I always talk about how we have people living all over the world, you have a very Australian accent, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Um, but you live in LA, correct? I live in LA. Yep. I'm, I'm right in the middle and the thick of it here in West Hollywood. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, if anything, at least, you know, you're, you're on the, the right side of it. So no worries yeah. about that. So tell me about living. Tell me about how that got started. Tell me about everything that, you know, you do with this organization. Sure, mate. So living in uh, as you mentioned earlier, is a nonprofit. We started in 2013 after the death of a very good friend of, of mine. Um, and Casey, who's the other co-founder, he's based back in Australia looking after the team. Mm -hmm. um, so big kudos to, to the team and himself. But a very long story short, Dwayne, Dwayne suffered with depression and bipolar disorder for a number of years. For those of you who don't know, uh, bipolar disorder is a you know, it can be a complex mental health challenge. And, yeah. you know, he had the very high highs and, you know, I could take on the world to the very low lows and, you know, they're very dark. And then obviously everything else in between. Yeah. Um, and, you know, at a young age, I knew that Dwayne had suffered with a mental health challenge, but I didn't really know to the, what extent that was, how it felt, what it means, um, how do you manage it. Even though I had my own mental health challenges growing up and I still, you know, even being diagnosed at a young age with, you know, anxiety and depression and, and whatnot. And still, you know, on my own journey, didn't really had a full understanding about what he might've been going through. Sure. Fast forward a few, you know, a few years in, in that, if this all makes sense, hopefully it does. And I'm taking it back a few years, but yeah, it's all right. pr pr prior to the year of 2013, you know, I'd reconnected with Dwayne after a few years, I was living overseas and I'd come, I, I came back from the U S um, I lived over in the US in 2012 and okay. I, had a, I had my own fallout, so to speak, and I was tumbling down the rabbit hole and I reconnected with Dwayne the year of 2013 and fast forward to the night of September, you know, September 15, 2013 and tonight I'll never forget, you know, I was at a party with Dwayne at his house and um, he, just to give you an idea of who Dwayne was as a, t a sort of person, he was a young, very charismatic, extremely talented life of the party loud but extremely honorable and a great man to be around and he had a lot of friends he had an amazing family and Dwayne opened up to me the night of about his mental health challenges and given the background that I've already explained around having my own challenges Dwayne having you know depression and bipolar 
you know, I listened as best as I could have to, to what Dwayne was saying that night, right. you know, and I thought I listened as best as I possibly could have. I also thought I said everything that I would have liked to have heard um, in that situation. Dwayne told me, you know, he tried to take his life twice before and oh, man. I was so caught off guard, man. I didn't even see it coming. Yeah. You know, this, this guy is like the last person you would have thought who would ever be suicidal. Right. Who would ever try and take their own life. Like he was always on. And, you know, there were times when he wasn't on, um, but only a select few people would, would really understand that um, in his own life. And, you know, I reassured Dwayne, things are going to be all right. You're going to be good. You've got an amazing family around you, support networks. I'll be here when, whenever you're ready. And, yeah. you know, and, and, and Dwayne being Dwayne, told me the future looked bright and promising for him. Everything looked great. He reassured me, you know, Webb, I appreciate you're one of my closest. This is why I've told you this. Um, and this is why I'm sharing with you on this deeper level because I trust you. Yeah. And, mate, that was the last time I saw Dwayne in living form. He ended up taking his life not so long after that conversation. And, you know, the last words that I heard from Dwayne that evening was, I'm fine. And, you know, I don't take I'm fine for an answer anymore because right. – it's a very easy remark to say to someone, but it's about, you know, being the safest person possible so that you can find out what's happening on a deeper level. So anyway, we started living in honor of Dwayne so that we could stop other people like Dwayne and people who lived in silence to stop taking their own life. Yeah. Really. Um, so that we could break the stigma around mental health. And that's amazing because, you know, our, our goal at the center is kind of the same thing, you know, to destigmatize mental health and to say like, look, it's okay to be vulnerable and talk about it. And it's kind of, it's kind of amazing to talk with very like-minded individuals because one, I'm a very vulnerable, open person about my mental health struggles as well. You know, I, I can hit on the same beat with you with anxiety, depression. I, I know exactly what you go through with that, but it's amazing to meet another. And I say this in the most kind hearted way. It's nice to meet another male that has that ability to open up and to say like, look, I don't take this for an answer. I care about you, man. I really enjoy you and I want you to be safe. It's amazing that men are starting to realize that it's okay to be vulnerable and it's okay to be emotional. I just, I, I'm always on that proponent. Yeah. It's, it is an important conversation. One that I think we're finding, you know, more common these days than what it was many years ago, but there's still a long, you know, a long way to go. And, you know, for example, everything that we're doing at Living is really trying to educate people that it ain't weak to speak so that people can speak up and seek help because everyone deserves to live. Everyone deserves to live a happy, healthy, fulfilling life. And it's yeah. just unfortunately, some people don't see that that's an option for them. And I remember when I you know, grew up and I went to high school and college and was working in a corporate workspace before becoming, you know, pursuing acting and part of me starting the mental health organization Living. Yeah. Um, if I had the education and the tools growing up, maybe I would have had that conversation differently. You know, mm -hmm. had I have seen maybe some of the warning signs that I didn't notice post post Dwayne's passing that, you know, I didn't have the, you know, foresight to actually unpack them at that time because maybe I wasn't being truly vulnerable myself. And I, ha I think had I have had that conversation on a different level, and saw the warning signs and I know I can say this now and look, I don't beat myself up about it by any means, right. but, I, but I know if I had those, those tools in my tool belt, so to speak, I could have, could have done something different. I would have had more things to choose from and maybe I would have remained a little more calm on myself. But you know, this is the same conversation that we hear day in and day out with the work that we do as I'm sure the work that you do Aaron over the years has been, you know, serving in the police force and working for the center right now. I mean, this is a conversation that's all too common. It, it is. And, it, and so, so for, for maybe my interest, you say like knowing the tools, are you talking about like certain trainings like QPR or like assist or things like that? I mean, to a certain degree, they can obviously be very helpful, you know, yeah. but I mean, just the really basic tools and strategies. So our organization delivers um, a 45 minute program called Living Well. Okay. We deliver that into school classrooms uh, and workplaces right around Australia, um, sporting clubs, communities, to teach people that it ain't weak to speak, but also they're really basic tools, you know, self-care, mm -hmm. what you can do to look after yourself, be proactive. Yeah. Things like what you wouldn't say to someone that's struggling with a mental health challenge, you know, things like 
signs and symptoms, looking out for warning signs, behavior changes in your friends or your families or your loved one, or, you know, how to actually reach out and have these hard hitting conversations. And they're not taught. Um, we're expected to know them yet. We're never actually taught them. So this is what we're doing. We're teaching people the really basic skills that anyone can take on and do. And you do not have to be a mental health professional to, to save someone's life. You know how true that is because, you know, our executive director, she's got degrees after degrees after degrees, knows everything about therapy, could literally tell me something on a dime. Me, I have one very, very minor associate's degree in criminal justice, but I have a master's in life experience, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's, I think that's what it comes down to is sometimes you don't need the piece of paper to say you have the experience to tell somebody what to do you know what, I've gone through what maybe somebody else, like what you've gone through. So I think I could relate with you on that sense. But if I had a degree and no life experience, I don't think we would relate the same. Yeah, true. And, you know, I, th- I think everyone in this space, you know, contributes to, to an amazing cause, whether you're a mental health professional, whether you're a loss survivor, you know, coming from a lived experience, having your own challenges. I think everyone you know, I, I feel like we all can correlate this story uh, alongside each other's to make a bigger impact. And that's why I think it's so important that we collaborate and work together. And that's why mm-hmm. I think being on a podcast like this and shedding stories and sp- spreading love, I think is really important. Um, not just for, for males, but also for everyone, you know, from all walks of life. Um, yeah. everyone, everyone's got a story, I guess it needs to be probably told at some, some, some time. Yeah, no, and that's that's exactly it. Everybody has a story, you know. Mm. That's that's our theme, and it's yeah. it, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't. Mental health doesn't discriminate in any facet. It can man, woman, child, you know, black, white. It doesn't matter what you are. It doesn't discriminate. And yeah. the more that you talk about it, the more we're going to destigmatize it, and it's not going to be that. Oh, hey, Aaron has a mental health issue, and all of a sudden, oh, I don't know what that means. No, hey, what does it mean? Are you are you doing okay? Are you talk like are you talking to anybody? It's those things that drive me nuts because it's so it's always negative to people when it shouldn't be. Like any other physical illness, people don't people don't react the same way, or they are more sympathetic to it. But I feel like with mental illness, it becomes different. I think they're maybe scared. I don't know if that's the right word to say it or not, but maybe it's just the not knowing so much about it. Yeah, I think I think that probably you know is a good point. I think there's a lot of people that are probably scared or a little bit nervous to have the conversation because they don't want to say the wrong thing. Yeah, um, and I th- I think something I want to make really really clear is yeah, there's obvious things that you can you can say that you know probably aren't helpful, but with the right intentions you know, it's very hard to say the wrong thing if you've got the right intentions. Yeah. Okay. But saying it in a way that, you know, isn't coming across condescending or judgmental, saying it in a place that comes from calmness, peace, you know, you want their best interest. You're listening. You're listening to really understand. Yes. Not listening to just rebut and come back with something. You know, I think it's important that, we can all save lives. We can all help someone no matter what journey you're on. This isn't just suicide prevention. This is a life to live well, to live better, to live be- happier, to live healthier, to live longer. Yeah. You know, this isn't to the, might not be to the people who are struggling right now with a diagnosable mental illness. This could just be someone having a shit day. Yeah. Someone having Absolutely. a rough day at work or someone in the midst of changing a career or someone that doesn't like what they're doing for work. They might be feeling down in the dumps. So we've got to teach them really early preventative measures so that they can, you know, get back on that track where they need to get to so they don't fall down the rabbit hole like a lot of us have. And unfortunately, not a lot of people can come, not everyone comes back from the rabbit hole and that's just the way it is. No, they they don't. And, you know, when they go down that rabbit hole, it only gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And it takes so much more to pick somebody back up and it takes that support system. It takes just having that little bit of hope because if you don't have that hope, what else is there in your mind? You know, there's Mm. nothing. It's so great to hear that there are organizations and I don't want to say like big organizations, but there's also small ones. Like we're a very small organization. I I don't know what the size of living is, but at the same time, you still have the like-minded goal of what we have. 
that's where we do. You're right. We need to spread the love and positivity. We need to collaborate. We need to do what we can together in yeah. order to advance, you know, the, the, or break that stigma. Yeah, true. And you know, th- there's thousands of uh, mental health charities in the world, everyone doing remarkable things, everyone, mm-hmm. you know, trying to make a difference and change. And, you know, I'm always, I'm always big on, you know, if you can work together to make more of an impact, why wouldn't you, you know? Sometimes Absolutely. it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to, you know, iron out the finer details to how those collaborations look. But <laughs> right. I'm sure, I'm sure if you've got the right message and you know the end goal is the same or similar and the synergies exist, it, you, you can make it happen one way or another. And I'm a big believer of that. That's that's really great. So how? So I, I kind of alluded to that. How big is your team? I know you're co-founder, so I'm assuming there's got to be another one. Yeah, yeah. So there's two. There's two of us. Um, but the team, we're all on the same level, man. Everyone's part sure. of the living team. Even the community are part of living. No one's better than anyone. No one's right. higher up than anyone else. And there's there's eight of us right now working um, for living. And then there's um, obviously, a, you know, we've got a bunch of facilitators who are also um, work for living all over Australia that engage in talks. Obviously, things have sort of changed now with with the COVID-19 pandemic and whatnot. But yeah. Um, we got a big team, man. Living's definitely a, a, a community-driven organization, and honestly, it wouldn't be where it is today if we didn't have that support. There's no way on earth. Well, and that's exactly it, because you think like you know, you and I are talking about it, and you think maybe there's not that many people that can relate or care or anything. But you just said it. You have this community that has grown and shown that they need that support. That they need those tools to really collaborate and make things better. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really important, mate. The the working collectively together, learning from other people. People have d- different insights, experiences, right? Students, and it's just about learning. Just learn, 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 and um, just be open minded to things. And that's that's what we continue to do at Living, and that's the that's the trajectory that we're we're, we're going to keep going down. So, if you don't mind me asking, you're saying that you you struggle with anxiety and depression. Do you continue to struggle with that? Mate, it's probably more more for me, mate. Uh, I mean, these days it's probably more of just the anxiety stuff. You know, it's especially now. Like I can I can talk from an experience of going through coronavirus, for example. And, yeah. And going through the experiences of out here in LA. Yeah, please do, please being, do. Yeah, being away from home. I think I think what I've learned and and what I'm continuing to try and refine and train my brain, and I'll probably be doing this forever, as as will probably most people, um, is just trying to remain calm. Trying yeah. to remain calm and, and, and find the peace and not panic, uh, especially right now. You know, it's a very uncertain time. People are making very short decisions, quick decisions based on not a lot of information. Um, there's so many things that are uncertain that are in the air. Right. And people are fearing so much about the future um, and they're making all these, you know, changes because it's built on, you know, instinctual panic. And it's yeah. like, we need to slow that down and we need to start reaching out for support and telling someone how we're feeling. Cause you know, I'm out here with my, with my girlfriend, she's obviously American. I'm Australian. I, I can't go home right now, you know, because right. I'm waiting for a visa to come through. So, you know, for me, I'm off FaceTime and speak to family quite regularly, keep in touch with friends, but even back home and here. And you know, that's been a, a godsend for me. It really has. Like, yeah, it's been, there's been some times, especially in the last three months where, my panic and my anxiety, you know, has been really, really heightened. Um, but I continue to learn. I try and research ways to, to, to work with that, reach out to people who are mental health professionals to try and get that support so that I know how to deal with these things. Cause we can't do these things on our own. You're not, you're not actually supposed to do these things on your right. own. Right. A lot of people think that yeah, you're supposed to do all this stuff on your own. Right. And, and I'm meant to have all the answers for everything, but it's, it's <laughs> wrong. It's not the right, it's not the right approach. Right. Um, and I have found myself in some pretty sticky situations. Yeah. Um, but I mean, thankfully, I've got a great support network, but thankfully, I've learned a lot over the years. So I've trained my brain. I've got a pretty good, you know, belt of tools that mm-hmm. I can draw on at, at any given time when, I, when I'm noticing and, and acknowledging when I'm not feeling 100% and that, you know, I can, I can work from. And sometimes some of those tools that have worked for me, 99.9% of the time, they don't work on me. <laughs> right. You know? right. And that's just a part of this life, man. That's just, just a part of this journey. And um, I just know after a very terrible experience or a day or a moment or an hour, whatever it is for anyone that might be listening, things do change. They don't yeah. always remain constant. Yes. Like 
everyone will have dips and everyone will have highs and everyone will have lows and everything else in between. And it, yeah, for some people it can stay, stay at a negative mindset for a while, right. but it won't really stay there forever. That's, ex- yeah, that's exactly right. You know, I, I think about before I was really diagnosed with anything, I, so I'm 33 right now. And when I got diagnosed, I was 29, all those years, 29 and younger, I thought that was just the normal way of living. I never really even thought about the fact that I would have anxiety or like that it would be something more than that. But now that I know, and I can kind of back check everything, I look and I go, that was anxiety at its peak right there. I could have easily handled this situation differently. But the thing is, it's who I am now. And that's where you have to keep going forward and really saying like, look, what can I do to better myself today and moving forward? What's happened's happened, plain and simple. But it's really interesting to hear, especially from, and I've never had a guest on that's had family where they're in a different country that they've only been able to communicate through, you know, FaceTime or Zoom or whatever it is. How, how is your family doing in Australia? Mate, they're all doing really well considering the times. I mean, <laughs> um, Ameri- Australia hasn't been affected as bad. Oh, we've definitely been affected by this. Right. Oh, things have shut. Um, part of me, there's restrictions <laughs> and whatnot, but not on a level like America, man. They're yeah, doing, they're, doing, they're, they're doing good back home. Everyone's pretty good with each other. They're all very supportive and it's a very, we're, we're a very tight family. So that helps. It helps, but it's, 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 yeah, I, I think my family want me back for Christmas and then, and every day that goes by is looking more and more unlikely. So I've just got to right. stay positive. Yeah. Got to stay, start to, got to stay optimistic because there are a lot of people out there that are probably in the same situation as me. And I'm not belittling my, my experiences and putting no. other people ahead, ahead of mine because I think everything's relative, but it's a, it is a really tough time for a lot of people right now. And my biggest personal advice um, right now would be just to try and remain calm and don't make any impulsive decisions. Right. Them. Because right now is that's what a lot of people are doing. And it's, it's not always the right decision. You've heard the term uncertain times. I, I would, I've, since this whole pandemic has started, I've heard uncertain times, I would say at least a million times. And, mm. you know, it doesn't really, it doesn't grasp hold of you until you really say like, look, we don't know where we're going to be in a year from now, but that doesn't mean it's going to be negative. I feel like the human brain has this constant thing to always go negative. And if we could stop that train and try to think like, okay, where's the logic behind this? Where's the reasoning? Where is all of these facts that would say it's going to be negative? I like that your mantra is very much stay calm, stay positive. You don't know what's going to happen, but it doesn't mean it's going to be bad. Exactly. And no one knows what the future is going to hold, man. No. You know, it's, it's very unpredictable anyway, no matter if the world was in a great place right now. It's not predictable. <laughs> so so I, I think it's just, yeah, try and remain calm, practice right. a lot of self-care, reach out and ask for help. Just really basic stuff, you know? Yeah. It, actually, it's not basic. It sounds basic, but when you practice it, it sometimes isn't basic. So I want to take that back. But with, yeah. it's, it's worth it. Invest time into yourself, self-care, invest time into research, invest time into support. Um, and it will be worth every every minute of the day. I think the more older you get, the more you realize that too, though. I, yeah. And it just it, it that's just a natural progression of life too. And mm. so, what is the state of Los Angeles right now? Well, mate, it's um I wouldn't be surprised. And again, not to be negative, I'm I'm trying to be positive, obviously, but I wouldn't right. be surprised. Which it would probably be a positive thing given mm-hmm. the the amount of panic in that here. I th- I think um I wouldn't be surprised if it goes back into a complete lockdown here. Yeah. I, I think that's imminent, but, but who knows the, right. I don't know what happens, man. I, I, I just, yeah, the, the state of California right now is pretty bad. You yeah. can't do too much. Everything's pretty much closed except in, in uh, outdoors is, is open. And, and I, I mean, I wish I could say the same for, for Wisconsin. I mean, we're, I don't know if LA has done this or even California has done this, but a lot of local counties organizations are starting to pass mask mandates. And I don't know if that's something that, that your county or your cities yeah. are doing, but yeah, it's, it's very, for some reason, that's such a hot button topic around it here. Is. It is a hot topic, isn't it? Cause it is here. It's, it's mandatory here outside yeah. of the house to wear a mask. In public, like even just walking down the street. Yeah. Yeah. And see that's, it's not here. And even if people don't wear it, nobody's enforcing it. Wow. Are they enforcing it in LA? Yeah. Like 
what what do they what do they do? They they, 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 they were fines. I, I I don't know that they are at the moment, but there were not, not very recently. There was three hundred dollar on the spot fines here in West Hollywood. Wow. Um, for no masks in a public place. So. That- I run with my mask on, but I I generally, sometimes when I'm tired, I put it around my neck. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing though. I mean, you have to have still some sort of normalcy. You have to run, you have to be outside and you know what, if I got to wear a mask to do it, I'm okay with that. It doesn't bother me too much, but for some people it does and yeah, whatever, whatever. And I I think, yeah, just, just people just need to remain calm as best as they can practice finding calm and peace and self care and let the rest of this stuff take care of itself. It will all work out. And I absolutely know the big problem, but you know, none of this is in anyone's control. You and I can't do anything about this. Our organizations can only probably be really, really good puppeteers and, and, yeah. and try and tell people to remain calm and teach people gratitude and teach people really good self care. Yes. We can't, not, we, we can't change what this coronavirus is doing. So just live with it. Pretend it's always going to be there and let's just move on. You know, exactly. And, or my uh, organization were, under the mantra too of give yourself grace during this time because you're not going to solve everything on your own. You know, it takes a community. It does, but do what you can, even if it's just as simple as if you have an elderly neighbor, go help them with something. If they need groceries, go to the store for them. You know, they probably can't go there, whatever, but it, it definitely is the time more than ever that you want to see people helping each other out and being there for each other. Because before this, I don't know if there was that much of it, you know, and I just, I feel for everybody that's going through this because I, I had a, a neighbor that was affected with COVID or infected with COVID and he ended up losing 60 pounds in a matter of a month. And, yeah. and he's just saying like, it, this is a real deal. This is something that's happening. Yeah. And I always just, it, it's always in the back of my head, like thinking, this could be anybody. This could be your dad. This could be your mom. Just think of other people is always what I try to say. Yeah, I agree, man. I'm into that. And just help people, you know, it's a good, it's a really good time right now to practice gratitude, practice compassion, empathy, reaching out and supporting people. And that might be the thing that helps you get through that day, you know? Absolutely. I think, Absolutely. That, I think that's key right now. And don't be scared to ask, ask for help if you're struggling. That's the other thing too. I think, you know, just even having people talk about it, like be vulnerable. And again, it's not, I love that you say it's not weak to speak. I love that because it's not, nobody has gone through this before. We don't know what to do. We all need help Mm. plain and simple. But so um, I ask, I ask one podcast. I know I really hardly ask you any questions beyond just a couple main ones, but I do ask one question on all the podcasts and it's always the same one and i always say take it how you wish you know there's really no right or wrong answer so what's your advice for anyone that's ever been in your situation or has resonated with something that you said today um my advice would just be to give yourself permission um give yourself permission to feel the way you feel and don't don't get angry or upset at yourself accept it acknowledge it, take full responsibility and don't forget to reach out and ask for help if you really, really need it. Cause you're not meant to do it on your own. Yeah. And that's no, I, I love that you say, you know, take responsibility. That's uh, extreme ownership is, mm. is the only one I can think of. And it's a, a Jocko Wilnick quote or mm. I guess book, but <laughs> yeah, it's, ex- you have to do things for yourself, but even if that means self care, I think that's hard for people to do, but it is. But I, I agree. I think that that's, that's a very important aspect to mental health, to suicide prevention. And I, and I love the fact that you have an organization that's dedicated exactly the same as we are to really breaking that stigma. And so tell me, how, tell me, how can people listen to your podcast? What's your podcast? Uh, how, how do people get in touch with your organization if they need to? Yeah, Aaron, thanks, mate. I appreciate it. And I appreciate being on here. I think you guys are doing great work. And Um, these organizations are all very needed and necessary. Um, and there's people that connect with all different organizations, but if people connect with living, um, definitely we'd love the support, reach out to us. Uh, you can, you can find us at living.org. Um, we can find the podcast obviously just on all of the major podcast streaming services like Apple and, um, Spotify and whatnot at Mm -hmm. it ain't week to speak with Sam Webb. That's the podcast. And, 
um, very grateful for all the support and yeah, we'd, of course, we'd, uh, of course. we'd love to help people from all walks of life. Absolutely. And I'll make sure I put your website in the show notes because it's yep. L-I-V-I-N dot org. L-I-V-I-N dot yeah. org. Yeah. No G. No, no, no G. It's living. <laughs> living. No, and I'll definitely get that on there. But uh, so uh, again, I, I appreciate taking your time to, to talk about your organization, just to have this good chat with about it with, with mental health and stuff, because it's you're right. It's needed more than ever now. And I think it's so important that we keep doing what we're doing and yep. just we'll get through this together. It's always yeah, what I tell everybody. Definitely, mate. We will. And I appreciate everything you're, you're doing. And yeah, looking forward to, to getting you on the podcast at some, yeah. some, some stage too, mate, so I can learn more about your journey and spread that uh, love. I think from a first responder point of view too, I think is extremely yeah. important. Something that doesn't get spoken about enough. No. So, mate, no. I think I reckon keep up the good work. And yeah, if you're in doubt, anyone reach out. But yeah, thanks for the support, man. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Sam, for coming on and, and really sharing your knowledge and your wisdom. It definitely is very empowering to hear from somebody that it goes through day in and day out their struggles and that they are willing to share those with people. It's very important. And like I said, vulnerability is more important than I think people realize. You know, I, I resonated with one thing that he had said, you give permission for yourself to feel what you're feeling. I don't think a lot of people do that. I think a lot of people try to mask it and they try to take a different route than the, the, the hard one of really saying, yeah, I'm struggling or I'm doing something. We are going through something that we've never gone through before. And I think there's a lot of anxiety and I think there's a lot of unknowns and it's, it's so hard. Give yourself permission to feel that and then you can find ways to overcome it. So again, Sam, thank you so much. And if you haven't, check out his podcast. It ain't weak to speak with Sam Webb. It's on all the other podcast apps and, and whatnot. It's a great one. The Center for Suicide Awareness has the Hope Line. It's a text-based emotional support service that is offered free of charge. All you have to do is simply pull out your cell phone, text Hope Line to 741741, and you'll be connected to a trained counselor to talk about any issues that you're facing right now. What you may think is minor or small is probably very difficult for you to go through. And that's why the center offered this, because it's an easy way to vent and it's an easy way to just talk and get those feelings out there to somebody. It's very important. So again, text Hope Line to 741741. Visit us on our social pages, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Center for Suicide Awareness in Kakana, Wisconsin. It's very important because we definitely can get a lot of information out through those social pages. So the more that you like it, the more that you can follow it, the better content we can get you. Did you like the podcast today? I hope you did because I enjoyed it. Again, I'm very biased when it comes to that, but I enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> Uh, if you do like it, share it, subscribe, follow, whatever platform you're on, do that so it can automatically be downloaded to your phone and you get it first thing right away in the morning on Thursdays. It's great. Rate us. Give us five stars, whatever, if you like it. It's important. It helps out the show and it helps us keep advancing our message and getting to what we want to be. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, anything you need. You can message me or email me at Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, at centerforsuicideawareness.org. I'm the one that will respond to you. If you want to be a guest, email me. We'll make it happen. This show's for you. That's why I enjoy doing it. Every week, I, I tell you the same thing. And so much more than ever is it so important to just really sink in and feel that. Like Sam said, Give yourself permission to feel what you're feeling. It's very important now, more than ever. As always, and I say every week, be kind to one another. You are loved and you are important. And remember, you are not alone. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.